analysis. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your uh, fellow trading colleagues if you find the information I provide uh, every week useful. And so uh, let's get into the week ahead. You can find it on tradingeconomics.com. Uh, it's this uh, box here, it came out 43 hours ago, January the 16th. And the week ahead, uh, zoom in a little bit. So it talks about the um, in the US, the spotlight will be taken by retail sales, producer price inflation. Um, that would be definitely keenly watched. Several housing indicators and earning reports for several big corporations. Also, fresh inflation data will be released for the UK, Japan, uh, Canada as well. That's uh, that's definitely going to be uh, an indication as to what the uh, central bank are likely to do with interest rates. Um, and monetary policy meetings will be held in Japan. That's a big one. Um, and that's pretty much the currencies that we trade. Finally, investors will be waiting for the fourth quarter GDP growth, industrial production, and retail sales for China as that sets the pace for uh, you know um, how soon global growth um, will you know return which will affect, you know, a lot of currencies um, in different ways. So uh, getting on to some uh, more in-depth fundamentals and technicals and starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index from last week, uh, we were talking about this um, being an area, um, a significant area and really a kind of a, a turning point fundamentally as to, you know, whether price was likely to, you know, bounce off of this demand zone um, or, you know, continue uh, falling. Uh, if you remember, you know, last week, if you go back to last week's uh, video and, uh, you know, basic, basically prices fell. And the reason why was not because we're in some sort of Elliott wave, uh, you know, wave two or wave three or wave four nonsense. It's really because of fundamental analysis and understanding that value for, for an exchange rate in a currency is derived from uh, from fundamental analysis, not price action. Price follows, you know, the fundamentals. And so um, bond investors, right, who are the smartest uh, investors, you know, on, on the planet, some of the smartest investors, because they have to really look um, ahead. They have to look into the future to decide why they're buying, you know, two year, 10 year, you know, 20 year treasury bonds or gilts. Um, these guys are... Um, you know, have got the, the the money they're buying government debt, um, and basically bond investors are at a crossroads with Fed pause in sight. So inflation trend in, uh, sparks bets that rate increases will end in March. Yeah, so open interest in Treasury note futures swells in rally, and so the emerging consensus that the Federal Reserve will raise rates only one or two more times has ushered in a new set of dilemmas for bond investors who now must decide. Which which parts of the market will fare best under the circumstances. And ultimately, you know, again, we were talking about this uh, last week and we've been talking about this for, for, the, for the last few weeks. And obviously I've been a, uh, a, a, had a buy bias on the dollar and I've actually changed my bias on the dollar, but I'll get into that in a sec. But um, if you want to understand why, you know, I changed my bias or I've changed my bias um, recently, and understand really about inflation and how um, you know it affects interest rates uh, as well as GDP. Um, I have um, some webinars on my channel. If you do type in, if you go to the search and type in webinar, right? Uh, this, uh, these, the top two or these two um, videos should come up. You know, fundamental analysis webinar and how to forecast huge trends uh, using forex fundamental analysis. My most recent webinar. Um, watch uh, those, and that will give you a real, you know, solid foundation as to um, how to really kind of predict large trends um, in, in the Forex market and why you should change your bias. Really, you know, you're changing your bias on currencies and we're changing our bi current bias on currencies maybe once, twice a year maximum, right? On the dollar, um, I've been short, or say short, short on the euro dollar, but um, I've been short on the euro dollar, yes, but long dollar for nearly two years, right? That's the only bias I've had fundamentally. And you can look back on the on the euro dollar chart over the past, you know, year and a half, nearly two years, and you'll see the, the massive downtrend. Um, and so if you watch those two, that give you a solid uh, foundational understanding. And talking about now my long dollar bias um, in the uh, in our private Discord members group um, on the, I think it must have been the Monday, yeah, no, sorry, the Wednesday, um, when we have our uh, weekly uh, private meeting for the group, um, I was talking about the... Um, 
I was talking to a couple of the guys who were, um, and I was saying that we were in interesting times and you definitely want to watch the recording because um, uh, Dr. Ninja couldn't make the uh, the Wednesday live call. And I said, lots to go over. I said, I'll give you a sneak peek. I'm going long on the Euro now. And there was a lot of uh, minds being blown, right? Because, you know, the guys in the group have known that we've been long dollars for so long. Um, you know, the a change in the bias, you know, can be you know, a bit uh, of, a, of, of a change, right? If you get used to uh, buying something, but again, we have to be, um, you know, flexible in our thinking. And so I'm going to release as well a, a trading uh, video or Wednesday's call matter, in fact, the 11th of January. And again, this is a private call, which is uh, for private members only. I'm gonna release this video or parts of this video um, to really kind of show you in depth what I was um, uh, talking about uh, with the guys. And this is analysis that really is just exclusive for the um, for the guys in the group. And this is just one of the, uh, the, the training pages. As you can see, I've got, um, you know, hundreds of videos, hundreds and hundreds of videos going back, you know, three, four years probably, um, if you remember. And uh, in this, I will explain and I break down to the guys, um, you know, why uh, the Euro is now a long and um, and also as well, things like hindsight bias, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you do wanna be a, um, a, a member of the Trading 180 group when it opens, I am opening up the enrollment in um, 21 days, the 6th of February. Uh, and I'll only do it for about a week, so I'll do it from the 6th to the 10th, um, which is you know Monday to Friday, and it'll be your opportunity if you're looking to join to really kind of learn the fundamental analysis. Um, a lot of people uh, tend to you know look at you know just price action to predict price, and really you're flying um, you know blind really, um, and it's just a game of luck if you're just using you know price action. You want all the probabilities in your favor, and smart money use fundamentals. So why wouldn't you, right? Why wouldn't you use fundamentals? And also as well, just one of the things that you get access to um, is a fundamental analysis spreadsheet. So this was is our is our spreadsheet that we use um, to uh, decide on where we want to go long or short. This is my bias that I um, I uh, provide for the uh, traders. Um, you know whether I'm long or short or neutral, right? Because not every pair is to be uh, is to be traded. So this is my watch list of. Um, of uh, pairs as well when you get access to all of this and understand you know really why we're going long or short on uh, pairs or why we're not even trading pairs right and that is the guidance that you'll get by joining the uh, mentoring group so heading back to the dollar index my bias is now short right my bias is now short on the um, on the dollar and that again was due to um, really inflation uh, coming in um, you know, lower than expected again, um, a, a bit of a trend uh, when it comes to inflation. That's not to say that the dollar won't pull back at some point. Of course it will. But um, I think the market now is accepting the fact that we're probably uh, likely to go a bit lower on the dollar. So any pullbacks on the dollar are, um, are probably shorting opportunities. Also as well, inflation is still to be watched because, in fact, if inflation still does tick to the upside, right, if it still does go um, higher, CPI core inflation, then in fact, and it's uh, seen as trending higher, then potentially um, the knock-on effect of that would be, you know, uh, Fed will uh, continue to hike rates um, and then we could get all hike rates from, for, for have... Um, uh, increase their uh, uh, rate hikes and um, we could see in fact uh, the dollar still you know kind of pull back a little bit more than anticipated but these are really the zones I'm looking at um, in terms of you know just dollar index looking at dollar index and uh, I think probably the the 105s are going to be a really or 104 is going to be a really nice confluence uh, for short trades um, on that dollar on you know pairs like the dollar yen dollar swiss dollar cad etc um so that's really my bias for now for the foreseeable future at least for the next uh quarter or so but again it is data dependent um moving on to the uh, dollar yen and again um dollar yen uh, i am actually long on the yen got in on that pound yen trade um i was telling you guys last week kind of broke down a few videos uh last week and um in fact if i go to again my um my home channel right and if you go to the videos section 
and it was um, really broke it down as far as our bank short the pound in 2023 um, and also will the bank of japan cause 100 pip move a thousand pip move sorry on the yen right so pound yen that was the trade idea and if you go to the pound yen you'll see what happened this week and i got in right at the top um and as many as well as many of the uh the group members as well but <clears throat> we're talking about the dollar yen um and this is really now where the supply zone is again i think with the uh with the yen um, dollar weakening the yen looking to strengthen in fact uh, yield curve control monetary policy changes on the horizon the potential for one then we have you know this uh, scenario uh, which is probably the one that i'm looking towards um and then if you are looking to get long on the dollar right then the next uh, demand zone is going to be right at the one two sevens in fact the um, there's calls for the for the uh, dollar yen to actually this year reach the one uh, twenties so if you think about where we are, uh, one two sevens. Uh, that's at least about another seven hundred pips of uh, of movement to the downside potentially um, that we could go. It's not going to be necessarily a straight move all the way down. Of course, you know lower highs, lower lows, uh, even higher highs, higher lows within that lower highs, lower lows. And so uh, let's see what happens. Just about looking at the uh, right opportunities. Uh, Dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss again. Not really a pair, say a game, but not really a pair that I'm looking to trade. To be fair, um, but we do have um, prices that now come down into this uh, this lower demand zone. Um, again, I think you know from a technical analysis perspective, it's probably looking at you're looking at buy trades there, or you're looking at probably sell trades around that 94.50 or fresher areas of supply around the 95. Uh, zone not looking to buy the dollar or the Swiss uh, dollar CAD again with the uh, dollar being weak and potential uh, for um, uh, zero COVID policy um, helping uh, commodity currencies now we're looking at these areas of uh, supply if we're looking to buy the commodity currencies against the dollar um, this isn't really a pair that I am looking to, looking to get interested in um, but there's reasons why you, you know probably could get really um get interested in this um buying the canadian dollar um i think for me i think a, a, a deeper pullback would be the 137s would be probably the best area to look for any kind of short trades um if you're looking at short trades and buying a cad over the dollar if you're looking to buy the dollar then maybe from now down into the 132s before looking at getting uh long and possibly even down to the 131s before potentially getting uh, long right there. Uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, um, US dollar. And uh, yep, so we did again from last week, drawing out the zones, um, prices did actually come back down into this area, the one uh, 0 0.62 near the round number. Um, yeah, it was six one. Sorry, uh, did actually go beyond the sixty two area and then we kind of bounced off of there. And that was obviously driven by uh, CPI. So again, if you do want to get long and buy the New Zealand dollar on uh, against the US dollar, then you're looking for deeper pullbacks um, into the 0 0.62 area, maybe 0 0.61, 90s, 80s, um, to get looking look for long trades. If you are looking for short trades, I would suggest probably looking at, again, the higher zone, uh, this above the 65, 65.50s for any kind of short trades if you're buying the US dollar. The pound is a is a very interesting one. So again, just we've got some dollar weakness, but we've also had um, a bit of a pound good news. I am still short on this pound, but um, I think they may avoid um, a technical recession. Um, data came out for GDP, which was better than um, than expected, and it says uh, what recession UK consumers and business signal optimism. So card spending data and investment intentions remain resilient. Stronger demand could keep uh, up pressure on the Bank of England to continue, sorry, continue to hike. And so Britain is weathering the worst of the cost of living squeeze in memory, better than indicated by dire projections for a catastrophic, catastrophic recession. And so, um, yes, yeah, recent data, recent warm weather. Uh, has come out and um and i think there was uh, an article i think it was on uh, it wasn't um i must have uh, closed it but basically it was talking about the world cup being a um being a marker um of um let me see if i can find it one second 
Nah, I think I must have closed it. Anyways, um, it's talking about the, the World Cup boosting, World Cup spending, you know, drinking, going to the pub, etc. Uh, boosting, um, um, spending and public spending boosting, um, or retail spending boosting the GDP, right? And helping to, you know, keep GDP. So um, warm weather, um, some um, decent uh, GDP numbers that came out. And so maybe the... Um, the, the UK isn't as bad as first thought, but I still think they're probably the worst of well, one of the worst anyway of the um, of the currency. So I'm going to continue shorting the pound. But now I have to kind of adjust my downside targets because it might not fall as um, as far as expected. So with that being said, the pound really hasn't moved that much against the uh, the, the, the dollar considering, um, you know, the dollar weakness since CPI. Uh, so there is actually, I think, an opportunity to go short on that pound um, at, up at the 124s. I think that's actually a decent opportunity. If I'm buying a dollar against anything, it will be against the British pound. So that's, you know, where I stand. If you're looking for any kind of buy trades then um, and buying the pound against the dollar, then you're looking at a pullback into that zone there. And in fact, there is um, a demand zone right here. All right, demand. Yep. And so any kind of pullback into uh, this area here, I think is decent. Well, the lower end, I would say, is definitely the best um, area. The 119s, 118s, 60s, I think, are probably the best area to look for any kind of long trades if it can pull back. Um, Euro dollar. So Euro dollar, um, again, the switching bias after, you know, a good, you know, two years of going short, right? So we're in 2023, you know, we were short from, I think, um, around February uh, 2021. So, you know, we've been short all this time, yeah? Um, on the uh, on the euro, we had a short bias at least and just been, really been buying on lower highs and lower lows. That's all, all we've been doing. And now it's time for a, you know, long bias on the dollar for now. Um, sorry, long bias on the euro for now. And um, one of the uh, one of the triggers was when I saw this was that Goldman no longer sees euro area recession as it lifts outlook. So region's economy is now expected to expand 0.6 in 2023. ECB still predicted to raise deposit rates to 3.25 by May. And so um, because they're not heading into a recession anymore and uh, the US is isn't doing as great in terms of um, uh, hiking rates and they're looking to end their hiking cycle sooner um, again you see Goldman Sachs now says the euro area will avoid the recession and this is what the new data is pretty much pointing to so the new for forecast is for actually better growth now so rather than you know Q1 being in a contraction now you've got actually uh, growth going on so for me um, the euro uh, is you know, a a buy for the uh, foreseeable future, of course, if the data supports that, then great, right? So for me, I'm looking at pullbacks into demand zones um, of some sort. Again, this is not financial advice, just, you know, telling you what um, I'm doing and what the group are likely to do. And so, the, you know, any kind of deeper pullbacks, no one knows whether it's going to reverse there or there or there. But the point is, is that, you know, the, the bias for me anyway, my bias is now to uh, go long on the uh, the euro for the foreseeable future. And so, um, again, hopefully if the data plays out, then that's going to be a very uh, lucrative um uh, trade idea and so also as well we have euro rally may have more room to run as ecb takes hawkish baton from the feds a single currency set for best week against the dollar since november and ecb hawks mild weather and china reopening bullish case uh, build bullish case so um again um 120s if that's one of the targets that's at least you know we've got about a thousand one thousand two hundred one thousand one hundred pips to the upside right so that's you know way somewhere up here if this prediction does you know come true uh lots of, of upside uh potential again no one knows whether it will whether it won't but ultimately um if that does come true um and there's uh, obviously a case supporting that then um this is how you predict um, long-term trends again it's not some silly elliott wave uh, deciding where price is going to go it's you know the, the the smart money who um you know look at fundamental analysis and determine the value of a currency um 
so that's where we are with the euro dollar again any kind of short trade you're probably looking at now but for me my bias is to the long side you um aussie dollar um again for for the uh if I'm shorting the, the, the dollar as well, it, one of the commodity currencies that's top of my list is to buy the Australian dollar. I really am looking, uh, getting bullish on this. So any pullbacks into uh, demand zones for me are going to be buying opportunities. You've got a, you know, you've got a stack, a really a big stack of uh, demand zones and it's not necessarily the nicest you know, thing to draw such a wide zone, but how you would kind of break that up. One of the ways you kind of break it up is to uh, look for any kind of support and resistance, major levels of support and resistance within that zone. And that looks like um, there's one of them right there, somewhere around there where you've got, you know, areas of support and resistance. So I do think that coming down to that 6750s is going to be quite nice or even lower if there's a, you know, um, prices do pull back and do a deep pullback or give us a deep pullback then I think um, anywhere around there is going to be quite nice as well 66 areas um, and this is really driven by um, you know the world global um, growth reopening uh, Australia being um, a beneficiary the major one of the major beneficiaries of China reopening right uh, Aussie yen um, a tricky one a very tricky one uh, when it comes to trading, it's not on my list of things to trade anymore. And um, uh, but if you are looking to trade this, um, I think you know if if the yen um, and the bank of, bank of Japan are uh, are going to change their monetary policy, I think that's going to be really the, the driving factor with the with the uh, with the Aussie yen. So if I had to choose a bias, it would be. Uh, to the downside you can see again fresh area of supply prices came up and um, really a really nice trade if you were looking to trade that technically um, I think if you are looking at getting short here um, it's not necessarily the best uh, trade to get short or best area because you know first touches of supply or demand zones are really the best times to get uh, long or short um, you can see here there was a demand zone of course and then prices came back and then price went to the upside prices went back to the downside right so this is where value um, establishes itself first touches and so um, for me if you are looking at getting long or short again just be cautious that you know these areas have been touched you know several times or once already so it's you know the, the, the weaker it becomes so probably looking for higher levels um, for long or short trades but again personally I'm not really interested in the Aussie yen for now of course if you're going long um, that 80 five would be the uh, definitely a nice fresh area of demand um, but you have to really be bullish on that uh, Australian dollar and really bearish on that and that like Japanese yen and finally the uh, gold right so gold is again just benefited from um, dollar weakness and is likely to continue to benefit from dollar uh, devaluation um, and the Fed not hiking as much although inflation is coming down uh, I think there's probably you know talks of recession as well and so the, the recession talk, um, although uh, I do think that, um, you know, other economies are like to go into a recession first, um, the recession talk seems to be hitting the dollar a lot more than uh, others. And we've just seen that, again, the euro um, is likely, is less likely to actually enter into a recession. So, in fact, that benefits, um, that benefits the, um, uh, the dollar um, well, it benefits the euro over the dollar, and um, but gold, I think personally, just from a risk perspective, central banks have been buying gold for um, in record numbers for a while now. So for me, again, I'm just looking for uh, pullbacks, not necessarily looking to trade gold, um, just buying gold as, as an investment. I've been doing that um, for a while now, anyway. So uh, any pullbacks into these areas uh, for me are buying gold buying opportunities that's not having my bias but if you're looking to trade uh, these areas then yeah these these, these are the, the zones that you're looking at getting long anyways guys um that's it for this week i uh, hope you enjoyed it and um thanks for all of your messages i will release again uh this video that i had on wednesday in depth analysis probably mm, i don't know uh, maybe tuesday or wednesday i think um, and it won't be the whole video because the whole video I think is how long is it uh, an hour and 23 but I'll probably chop it up give you the the um, 
some of the main bits of course i can't give everything away uh because that would be unfair on the people who are in the group right you know can't get everything for free um so yeah but uh it'd be a really good in uh, a video for you to really kind of learn um uh, you know how to kind of change your bias what to look for etc etc anyways guys hope you have a great trading week don't forget as well that the enrollment starts on the 6th of february so if you do want to join and learn fundamental analysis um and apply it to your technical analysis um then um yeah it's coming up soon anyways guys take care